and I'm Jeannie Som, and we're co-owners with our husbands of Bee Apothecary. We are beekeepers and uh, we have decided to, we decided to make uh, products with our hive resources and uh, golly, I'm not even sure how to get started, I'm sorry. Well, we, we wanted to share with you our, our, um, our bees and the apiary first and then we'll come back in and talk about how we got interested in, in all of these resources from the, from the hive. So Lori's gonna take you outside for a minute and show you her hives. Yep. So these are my hives. You can see, I, can you see them? Um, I have actually four hives out here that are actually uh, active. Um, I have two that are going to be filled. I also have a hive out back that is a uh, swarm that we caught and it has feral bees in it, which are kind of important to our new uh, uh, beekeeping. We wanna uh, capture more feral bees because those bees uh, can get themselves through the winter and they can take care of themselves uh, versus some of these other bees that we uh, have imported from like Georgia or from Washington, which are uh, a little bit weaker bees. Um, their DNA has weakened out and they're not making it through our Ohio winters. So we want bees that make it through the Ohio winter. Um, this, these two hives right here are uh, from Southern Ohio, now up here in uh, the uh, Lancaster area. And those bees are, um, ready to uh, have honey extracted from them. We have, uh, I have two uh, supers full of honey and I'll probably get about 65 uh, gallons or 65 pounds of, of uh, honey out of those. And that is our, our small little apiary. All right, we're coming back in, coming back into the building. We started beekeeping in, um, in 2010 and um, Steve and, and her husband Pete and my husband uh, Steve, got, Lori and her husband Pete and my husband Steve got really interested and I just really wasn't that interested. I just felt like I had too much to do and didn't want to be involved in one more project. But um, I started reading books about the bees and the honey and got really interested in um, the medicinal and, and uh, nutritional aspects of honey. Um, and you know, sharing with them and, and uh, pretty soon came across this word propolis. And that is something that every beekeeper knows, but we had never heard of. And nobody that's not, a, anybody that's not a beekeeper probably has never heard of the word propolis, but it's a resin that the bees collect from tree buds and bark. And they bring it into the hive in their little leg baskets, run it through their body, and then they coat their hive with it, whether they're in a tree or a box. And what it does is kill germs like um, bacteria, viruses, fungus molds, and yeast in the hive. Um, they line the entrance, they glob it up in all the cracks and crevices. So as a beekeeper, when you go out to your beehive to open it, you have to have a little crowbar to pry everything apart because everything is stuck together with propolis. So beekeepers hate it. And it's real messy and sticky. It gets all over your equipment and your suit and your gloves. But what we discovered in reading about it is that it is actually harvested all over the world and made into natural medicinal products for human consumption. And as a matter of fact, it can be traced back to the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Roman civilizations. It was used in embalming. It was used as a, as a medicinal tonic. It was used on wounds. So we started looking at research and we discovered the National Institute of Health website and there's 70 plus years of research on propolis and the other high um, products as well, honey, um, bee venom, royal jelly, pollen. Um, and what we found is that propolis is antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antioxidant in your body. It's anti-inflammatory, so it reduces swelling and redness. It's also um, analgesic, which means it's pain relieving. So that's very beneficial in some cases. And we just got really interested in trying it out in our families. Um, we started mixing up, we learned from uh, some resources from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization website about how to collect it, how to clean it, and how to make it into things like tinctures and, and infused oils, just the same way that you would do with herb, herbs, where you soak it in alcohol or in oil to pull out the, the uh, active ingredients. And we started trying it as families, and we're just kind of blown away with the results that we got. Um, Lori's husband, Pete, is uh, somebody that gets walking pneumonia a lot in the wintertime. And he had taken a round of antibiotics and it came right back. And he took the oil for three, three or four days, day, three days, and the symptoms were gone. Yeah. 
Um, we have asthmatic children and I have an asthmatic husband that the minute they get a sniffle, it ends up in their chest and they've got an asthma attack and bronchitis in three or four days. And if they take the propolis right away, that doesn't happen anymore. So we just got really um, interested in we really need to share this about just thought about it, talked about it, prayed about it, and, and just really felt like this was something people in this country should have access to. Yeah. Um, so um, we took some classes through uh, small business development um, down at uh, Columbus State and did some research and kind of got started making up recipes and trying products with our friends and things like that. Um, so ultimately, um, we found out that this is considered a dietary supplement. You have to follow about where it's made, how it's made, how it's labeled, the words we use to advertise and things like that. And so we are required by law to make these products in a, an FDA certified facility. Right. So we go to um, ACENET, we started out in Athens, and they've since opened an office in um, yeah. Nelsonville, which is closer for us. Yeah. So we found to know how to manage our product um, in their, you know, sterile and, and uh, clean environment. And we also have some store down there. So there we um, manufacture our products. And then we have a building in Laura's home that become our B building <laughs> and um, Lori's going to give you a little tour here of Jeannie, um, your, what your we have and what screen we is here. Stuck. Can you hear me? Your screen's oh. stuck. Yes. I can still hear you but it says your bandwidth is low. There you go. You're moving a little bit now. You see this? You're, you moved but now you're stuck again. Oh, I don't know why that's oh. happening. Oh, I don't want to do that. Do we need to refresh, do you think? Maybe. I was still stuck. It, it's going I'm in and stuck. out a little bit. It's going in and out. We have a we have a router right here in this building. So I can um, hear you, but you're if, if I, what happens what happens if I refresh? Try it. Are we going to have to sign back? Maybe. Try it. Okay. Okay. Now, how do I get back in, Lori? Are you there? Are we there? Yeah, I can still see you, but your screen's still frozen. Okay. Computer. Here. We're going to call the computer tech expert. Um, okay. And I'll just, I'll give you a little back of what, um, as I said, um, we go to um, ACENET in Athens and make our products and then we bring them back here where they're stored and packing and such. So we um, we um, have an online work and we also, well now Lori's oh, no, coming to the computer here. <laughs> We also um, have our products in several places here in Lancaster and in Columbus. We're at Keller Market. Um, we're at The Well and we're at Happy Oat uh, Gluten-Free Bakery here in Lancaster. Uh, we have our products at Blystone Farm Market um, down south of Canal Winchester and also at Garden Herb Shop in Canal. Um, we have it at Urban Emporium in Bexley and at State and Third, um, which is a little boutique south, or uh, at State and Third below the, the hotel there. Um, we also have it at, in a couple of, of other uh, cities around Ohio, we have it at Krieger Market in Stowe and at uh, the Logan Glass Outlet down on 33. Um, so we, we're getting it out there. Um, we do a lot, we have done before COVID hit, we, did, we were doing a lot of um, festivals, bee conferences, state bee conferences and, and festivals and things like that. And um, things like um, uh, uh, health food and, and um, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the, the magazine, um, but, but you know, festivals that, that are about um, survival techniques and, and Mother Earth News is, is one of the ones that we've done a, a lot of those festivals. But um, of course, those have all been canceled <laughs> now since, since the virus hit. But um, 
we are, you know, still going, going here with our online business. And there have been a few smaller, we did um, the uh, festival at the Round Barn uh, at the fairgrounds here. There's another one coming up in the fall sometime that they're allowing to happen because they can spread way out and people can wear their masks and such. So um, we try to get, get out to those kinds of things. Are we still stuck? No, we're not. We're okay now. Yeah, you're okay. good. All right. Well, good. Um, Lori's going to kind of take, I'm going to take this and just kind of yep. do a tour of, of our space here and yep. we'll show you what we have. And so this, this um, building that I'm showing you is actually our storage area. Um, we don't do any um, production here whatsoever. We do all storage. So we do all of our shipping is done here. So when uh, an order comes in, it'll go through the shipping process. Um, it'll get packaged. Um, all of our propolis products are um, on the shelf here, um, which would be our, our tinctures, our oils, our nose spray, and our throat spray. And then you'll find um, our um, creams, which are, we have our lip balms, which are fabulous. We have like uh, seven, no, eight different, eight different flavors of lip balms. We have our Bee Rescue Cream, which is a fabulous product for um, wound care and um, skin conditions. We have Women's Line, which is our, um, uh, yeah, our Rejuvene and our, our B, uh, uh, Simply B product line. I'm sorry, when I'm, on, when I'm on doing something like this, I get a little nervous, I forget what I'm supposed to be saying. Um, then um, we also have our men's shaving stuff, which I can show you, but here, and then we also have our honeys. We have all of our honeys, we have our soaps up here, we have our herbs that we make um, uh, with our, uh, for our herb oils that is put into the majority of our product line. Um, you can go on beyond that, we're in our, in our refrigerated area where you'll see some of our products in there. You'll see our uh, Beehive Delight and our Elderberry Syrup. We'll also uh, put that, our creamed, hun our creamed honeys would go in there. But as you can see, this is definitely all storage. Um, ready for us to prepare to make product and or to uh, be uh, ready for uh, shipping and handling and whatever else that we need to do. But this is our building. It's a little building. It does what it's supposed to do. It's our, it's our second storage area um, because we have two, one down in Nelsonville where we store all of our um, products like our containers and uh, bottles and droppers and those kinds of things. And here we try and store most of our raw materials, like your oils and butters, your, um, the alcohols that we use, the herbs, the essential oils and those kinds of things, all the added products to it. And so that's, that's our building. And it started out in, in the, our uh, house and then it, we've grown as we've uh, learned what the laws are that we need to do to a, a uh, stab that we had to establish and then from there we just kind of grew and and uh, have extra areas to store our stuff and produce our stuff. We've recently purchased some um, well it's automated it's tabletop automated uh, production um, tools yeah so we have a, a new machine that will fill like a, a, hun a, a, a thousand bottles an hour and and it has different for us uh, that's a big deal yeah it has, <laughs> has different trays that will fit all the different sizes of products that we have and then it just moves controlled by a computer and moves across all of these trays and fills everything so we're excited no about more, that no more but manual fill of a, of a, <laughs> of a pump you know so but, but we still are making all the four of us make all of the products ourselves we yeah. we still feel like we need the control of the quality control of yeah. just us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll I'm gonna share some of our, our yeah, products so. here. Um, we, we do make a propolis honey where um, people can get their daily dose of propolis in, in, uh, in with their wildflower honey. And we do, uh, this is raw honey straight out of the hive. Um, raw honey has not been heated. It has only been strained just to get, you know, bigger pieces of pollen or wax out of it. So um, it's, it's completely uh, raw now. Raw honey does crystallize. So um, we have some little tricks and tools we can tell people about what to do with crystallized honey. But typically the honey that you buy at the grocery store is not raw honey. It has definitely been um, heated and, and uh, processed so that it doesn't crystallize on the shelf. But very often it is also imported and it has been adulterated with things that are not honey, like high fructose corn syrup. Um, so it's just a, it's a real difficult, there's, there's not a lot of enforceable laws about the purity of honey that are being, that is being dealt with here in this country. 
Um, we, so we have our, our plain wildflower honey in two different sizes. We also make something called bee bread. And bee bread is um, what the bees feed the babies, baby bees in the hive. It's a mixture of pollen and honey. Pollen is a superfood. It has all kinds of vitamins and minerals and protein in it. And it is necessary for the bees to develop their bodies but it has a very hard coat and the bees can't digest it and neither can we. So people that are into this new health food fad of sprinkling pollen on their, on their cereal or their yogurt are really not benefiting from all of the nutrients unless they've ground it up first because you can't break down the, the hard coat on it. But what the bees do in the hive is they layer honey pollen, honey pollen, honey pollen in the cells. And it, we've told, been told it's always been called bee bread because it looks kind of like slices of bread from the side. Um, but anyway, that honey over a period of a few weeks breaks down the hard coat on the pollen. So then all of the nutrients are available um, in our bodies to digest. So we make it outside the hive with pollen and um, we make three different kinds. We make, we make a plain kind, we make a kind that we, we uh, flavor with um, cinnamon. Um, pollen has sort of a, a wheat germy taste and it's not real applicable to some people. So we do make it with the cinnamon. And then we also make something we call Beehive Delight, which is the, the um, bee bread plus the propolis. Now the interesting thing that we found about bee bread is that it is equivalent in carbs and calories to energy gels that runners and athletes use. Except instead of being high fructose corn syrup and caffeine, it's actually the natural sugar from the honey, which is metabolized more like fruit, and then all the vitamins and minerals and protein. We have friends and family members that are athletes that use it. And they say instead of the high and the crash that you get every 30 minutes with the, the high fructose corn syrup gels, um, they get a real nice, long, even boost that just lasts forever. One of our friends runs ultra marathons of 100 miles and he puts uh, four ounces of bee bread in his water and just shakes it up and carries that with him. Um, now we're not endurance athletes, but we <laughs> like to use it too. It's great on toast in the morning. It's great when you're, you know, you're doing spring cleaning of your house, you're working outside and you need that extra energy and we'll make tea with it. Um, and we even have friends that keep a, a bottle in their desk or at work when you get the doldrums after lunch and you're kind of nodding off at your desk. A tablespoon of this will wake you up in about 10 minutes and, and you won't get the jitters like you do from, from caffeine. So um, that's a real beneficial um, thing. Where do you want to do, do the next batch here? Um, well, no, Jeannie, you don't have to get up. I know that you can. Right, go ahead. So some of the other things that we're making are, we make our, our propolis, our propolis products. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have what Jeannie was talking about was some of our natural wildflower honey. We, they, we uh, have them come in a couple of different um, varieties. We have our mooth jars, which are the one pound and, and half pounds. And then we also have our um, one pound regular honey. A little bit more expensive than your mooth jars just because you're buying the, the jar itself. But this is all raw honey. Again, you can see on the back side of some of these, I don't know if you can see through them, but they're starting to crystallize at the very bottom. So um, like Jeannie said, there are some tricks to um, decrystallizing your honey if you don't like your honey to be crystallized. Well, one, of, one of the tricks that somebody shared with us that I love is get a um, electric heating pad mm -hmm. and this put it good. in a big bowl in, on your kitchen counter and put a piece of paper towel down so you don't get honey on your, on your heating pad because honey is always sticky. And then you lay your bottle down on the, on the heating pad so that most of it is touching and put, put a lid or a plate over the, bo over the bowl and turn it on low. And if you leave it for about 24 hours, that heating pad will decrystallize your honey. You know, they tell you to do it in, in, in warm water, but that's a pain. You have to keep changing your water yeah. every hour or right. so. Um, so that's a quick, or doing, putting it in your car in, in the, the summertime. In the summertime, yeah. When your car heats up in the sun, it'll decrystallize your honey. Yeah. And that the heating pad is probably one of the better um, suggestions on how to decrystallize. The other thing we do, or we make some, pro our products are our propolis. So our propolis we have, we started out with, like Jeannie said, our propolis oil. That was the very first product we tried. We do a 10%. We've done our research. 10% um, 10, 10 is kind of more than rest, what the rest of the world uses to get rid of everything from the common cold all the way to cancer. Um, again, this here in the United States, it's a dietary supplement. Around the world, they use it in the pharmacies as a, a medicinal um, or medicine. Um, the propolis itself is 10%. 
uh, we it can you can use as little as three percent to take care of most things we take our uh, oil and our uh, tincture products here let me see these are um, used orally or put on your skin topically to take care of everything from sore throats, a toothache, uh, nasal issues like sinus infections or um, uh, congestion, upper respiratory, upper re yeah. ear infections, lower, any kind of uh, chest issues, digestion issues. Um, uh, and on your skin, I can get rid of poison ivy in five days. I just got rid of some, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Usually I'm on 20 days of steroids. And when I realized this will take it away in five days, putting the I use the alcohol to kind of dry it up too. Yeah. Um, so our oil is made with olive oil and propolis. Our uh, tinctures are made with two types of alcohol. One is a gluten-free alcohol, which is a fruit-based alcohol. The other is a grain-based. So both of them are they are all used identically the same. We also have from our um, tinctures we make our nasal spray and our throat spray, which are great for your sinuses, um, any kind of headache issues. I use uh, the nasal spray for migraines, for sinus infections, for a toothache. It's amazing what the uh, one and this is only 1% propolis with a saline solution in it. Um, it's fantastic. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't bother you. Um, it, it'll help you actually at night. If you get congestion at night, it'll clear your sinuses, it'll clear uh, your uh, air passages. The throat spray is fabulous for any kind of mouth condition. And actually the National Institute of Health recognizes um, propolis as a oral care. Um, it'll take care of everything from gingivitis, any kind of mouth wounds, any kind of surgical wounds you might have, a pulled tooth, um, canker sores, canker sores yep, sore throats. It'll help with ear infections, nasal issues in addition to that and it'll give you a nice fresh uh, tasting uh, breath afterwards. So I, I just use some, I always do. The one coffee. thing that we tell people is the, the propolis um, oil or tincture can be used a couple of different ways orally. It can be used preventatively mm -hmm. um, for people that have chronic illness or typically get something, you know, my husband is, a, is an asthmatic smoker and he spent probably 15 years sick, six times every single winter with bronchitis and pneumonia. He has been taking a half of a dropper full, about 20 drops every day for the last eight years. And he has had bronchitis twice in eight years. And he's not, typically does not have asthma issues. He's not taking daily asthma, daily asthma meds. Um, you know, so it really does make a difference. The other way it can be used is what we do is take it three times a day if, we, if we're sick. And if we feel like we're getting something, we start it right away. I was a school teacher, and when I'm getting strep throat, I know because <laughs> I've had it enough times. And I start taking it right away. And then when I go to bed that night, I'll kind of drizzle it down the side that hurts. And usually within the next, with the next morning, it's gone. Yeah. Um, so typically, some of the research is showing uh, it like it can reduce the common cold by two and a half times its length versus untreated. Um, it kills staph. It kills strep. It kills MRSA. It kills um, salmonella. Uh, salmonella and, and um, E. coli. Yeah. They're actually, some of the research they're doing right now is on salad green washes for the grocery store to kill the germs on the salad greens. Which um, I use every day. Right. <laughs> uh, it, they, it has um, a lot of organ protective qualities in your body if you take it orally. Um, they are actually killing about 50 different kinds of cancer with it in a Petri dish. So we don't know what how that is going to translate to, you know, cancer care, but, um, but we they do, are, we, we have had our customers that have used it for cancer care. And when they've gone to have surgery, the only thing they've done differently was use the propolis and they've come out having no cancer. The doctors are saying all, only seeing, um, an ulcer, an ulcer in there, Not the, a tumor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cancer in their lymph nodes is gone. They have no idea. And so we do know that there is proof that it does have, I mean, research shows that it'll kill it. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've got a couple of uh, customers who are, um, you know, lifelong uh, customers of ours because they found that the propolis is working for that also. We also have a product which is the 30% uh, propolis tincture. This was actually um, made for women with endometriosis, the research that we found for that, but it's also great for anybody with chronic pain issues, mm -hmm. um, pain in the back or um, uh, stomach issues, anything really, what cancer. The, the research we found um, is that women with endometriosis infertility 
can increase their chances of pregnancy from 20 to 60% if they take 1,000 milligrams of propolis a day. And we actually met a, a gentleman who's an OBGYN here in Columbus who is a beekeeper, and he started sending patients to us and had women getting pregnant. Um, we have a young friend that actually found that research before we did, and she has gotten to the point where her endometriosis is almost gone. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, we, we are seeing a lot of success with different, with different patients. Um, and we do, my sister-in-law um, took the 30% back to Oregon with her about three years ago. She has um, rheumatoid arthritis that had gotten worse and worse and worse, oh, yeah. allergic to anything they've ever tried to give her. And um, she's gotten to the point where she could hardly drive her car or hold a pen. And she started taking the 30% every day, half a dropper full, and within two months, all the swelling and nodules and pain in her joints and her hands is gone. So, um, you know, and now Steve takes it every day and he does not get rid of the, the rheumatoid arthritis or the osteoarthritis pain in his hand. So it, like anything, like any medicine, it's different for everybody, but um, it's been very, you know, successful for all of us and our families. Um, we are starting a new line um, in the next few weeks or so, we're going to be making um, three different uh, levels of CBD oil that have propolis in it as well to work on the synergy between those two things. CBD is um, research-wise is identified for two different kinds of childhood seizures, um, arthritis pain of both kinds of arthritis and um, anxiety and sleep issues. Um, those are the five things that we have found research on and uh, the dosage is all over the map. Um, so they, they just tell you to, to start, start low and go slow with, with uh, trying it. But um, a lot of people do get pain relief or get, um, they're using it in, in place of, you know, anti-anxiety medication, that kind of thing. So we're going to be uh, kicking off that particular um, line with the propolis. Yeah, and I know personally with me, since I'm I'm probably our first guinea pig, <laughs> I have been using the the propolis uh, uh, CBD oil, and um, during this whole pandemic, there has been a stress level and anxiety issues that I've had, and also asleep because you know as, if you're anxious, you tend to uh, think too much at night, and I have found myself relaxed, not, not drugged by any means. This, this has no THC in it. Um, I find myself relaxed, e easy going, and then my sleep at night is phenomenal. It's <laughs> wonderful to sleep. So, um, and, and um, I pass it on to uh, my mother who lives up in Michigan and she's trying it for the same things. She's, you know, you know, she's stuck at home by herself. Um, she doesn't have a lot of people who come around. So she finds herself a little bit more fearful in that. And so it has helped with that. So um, not that she has any pain issues, things that she's dealing with, but sleep and anxiety, mm -hmm. same with, mm -hmm. same with myself. So, um, that's come, that'll be out. We're, we're, we're already ready online. We're good with, um, the Ohio department of agriculture to, to sell a product. So we are, um, ready to go. That'll be probably two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And we'll, you should see it on our website at that point. So, mm -hmm. Um, the we, next things we have, yeah, Go we, we take the, we take our, our oil then in our tincture, which are kind of the base products and we make other things with them. So those become ingredients. We have, um, three different kinds of, um, creams that we make. Um, we have a kind of just an all over, um, body moisturizing cream. We find this has a little bit extra beeswax in it and we find that um, it lasts through hand washing. So we have daughters that are chefs and nurses and they like it because they don't have to keep applying it. There is propolis in this. Um, this one has the least amount of propolis, but my daughter who has a mild eczema can get rid of her eczema with this. But it's really great for, especially wintertime when you have the split fingers and heels and things like that. Um, it can clear that up pretty quickly. Um, and that has a, coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has a coconut oil base. We also make a, a facial cream for us ladies um, that has a lot of specialty oils in it that are for fine lines and wrinkles and skin tone and cell regeneration. Um, not the harsh things like the Retin-A that burn your skin, um, but we, we discovered early on Lori was using this very faithfully and she looked down at her hands one day and she had all of her freckles and age spots and the little warts that she had on her hands in two months were gone. So it really does lighten, and I, I've got a spot on my hand that I've gotten lightened up versus this dark one here. 
Um, and then the, the third one is based on a big research study that we found that was done in Poland in the 70s. This is called Bee Rescue. And this is intended for injured skin. It's two and a half percent propolis based on this big study. And the study was done on 100 people with hard to heal wounds. You can find the entire study on the National Institute of Health with before and after pictures, a chart that shows how many people, what their ages were, how long they'd had these wounds. This doctor had people with seven different kinds of wounds from deep tissue ulcers, bed sores to the bone, burns, surgical incision, infections, things like that. And he had almost a 90% healing rate of all of these. He had some people that had 30 year old deep tissue ulcers that he was able to heal with two and a half percent propolis cream. So that's what um, we make our product. It does have a shea butter um, and olive oil base. And we have had some great successes. We have uh, pictures on our website that uh, we've shared. Um, one, one gentleman, my daughter's a nurse and was doing home health for a while. And um, she was able to get the paraplegic's seven-year-old dinner plate size bed sore healed up um, in just like a week and a half. Well, she went on to a new job and the dad called a couple months later wanting more. And she went over there and the father who was a diabetic, an older man had fallen over his running lawnmower. And he had gashed his leg open about the size of a grapefruit, had 30 some stitches. And now it had been three weeks and he was calling Sarah to come and bring him this stuff. And she got over there and his wound was oozing with infection and black. And she said, Larry, you're gonna lose your leg, go to the hospital. Well, he wasn't gonna go. And he was insistent that this is what he was going to use. And he, his wife took pictures for us every Wednesday for 10 weeks. And in one week of twice a day application, his wound went from grapefruit size to about egg size with a scab forming in one week. And, you know, by 10 weeks, all he just had was a little pink mark on his skin left over. So um, that has been, you know, quite a uh, wonderful uh, success for, you know, some of our patients. Um, Lori, you want to talk about the women's, the women's so line? So the women's line, kind of, we kind of used that rejuvenate facial cream was the very beginning of it. Then um, uh, we developed a uh, rejuvenate eye serum, and the eye serum is fabulous for, oops, I'm, you can't my chest, <laughs> but the eye serum is fabulous for um, all of your, the wrinkles, fine lines and wrinkles, brightening your skin tone, bringing some uh, more, uh, 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 moisture back into the skin to brighten and, and, and revive your eyes again. Then we also have two new products um, that go along with the uh, Simply Be skincare is the shimmer stick and our um, blusher stick. And these sticks are actually kind of like the blush. The blusher stick is great for your cheeks, your lips, and your eyes. So it's a three-in-one um, makeup. It's great to carry around with you. I carry mine in my purse all the time. The shimmer stick is that little accent. It's that it's the highlights that you're going to put on your skin. You can put it on your on your chest, on your shoulders, um, along your cheek lines, along your nose, um, even your lips. Under your eyes. Under your eyebrows. Yeah, mm -hmm. those areas where you just want to highlight. Um, it's light. The blusher stick is light in color, so you can add multiple multiple layers to get the the darkness, the depth of color that you're looking for. So, and these are all one thing we haven't mentioned is that our products are all natural. There are no chemicals yep. other than flavor oil in any of our products. We do not put water in our creams because when you mix water and oil together, you create a medium for bacteria to grow. And there is no natural germicide on the market. We think propolis is probably it, but it's never been proved by the FDA. So we just keep the water out. So technically they're really balms. When you put them on, they feel a little heavy, but you only use about a pea size amount. And if you wait five minutes, the oils that we have chosen in our ingredients soak into the skin. And then you don't really know it's there after a few minutes. So um, that was the way that we were able to keep everything, you know, uh, uh, chemical free. In addition to that, we have seven different kinds of uh, lip balms. And again, these have no chemicals. You know, if you, if you look at Burt's Bees and some of those uh, Simply Bee uh, or not, uh, there's another bee company, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, um, they have gone to the dark side and they're full of chemicals. Uh, and it's really, lip balm's the easiest thing to make without because you don't have to put water in it. So the, all of our lip balms do have 1% propolis in them. So they not only act as a lip balm, but you can use them on bug bites, on skin, you know, cuts or nicks or whatever when you're out and about, um, rashes and things like that. It, it becomes a, a little wound stick sort of an effect. 
Um, so we have an unflavored and we have um, several other kind of different things. We have things like minty lemongrass and rosemary sublime. So we're trying to mix up some herbal flavors with some other things to make them a little different. So um, that's that's our lip balms. Lori's going to share with you our, you, you want to stand over here and I'll turn it. Lori's going to share with you our um, men's line. Check and make sure. Yeah. So our men's line is all natural again. Um, we make our soaps from a goat's milk based soap. Um, and then from there, we add some different types of uh, scents and um, uh, yes, I'm, I'm trying to, yes, hot lather. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Can you tell? I don't do television very often. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a hot lather shaving soap. It is not a soft soap. It is actually a harder soap. And so what you need is a brush for men. And for the women, you need a puff. And what you would do is you would get your brush in the soap quite warm, and then you would actually wet the soap and then work that lather up. You can also then lather your face with it. Some people will take that additional soap and kind of get it um, in the top of their uh, bowl or in a, the top of the cap and continue to lather it up to make it into something more. But our soaps themselves have propolis, uh, honey, beeswax in them. It also has um, additional uh, glycerin to help with um, moisturizing your skin. And then it also has clay in it to give you that nice slip from uh, your skin to the razor. So if you have, uh, if you don't have enough uh, conditioner or enough um, uh, lubricant, um, you're going to get the, the cuts and the breaks on your skin. And this way with the um, extra, clay. extra clay, you're not going to have that happen. So we have a, we have seven different um, scents of our uh, men's shaving soap. We also have a aftershave that is um, great. It's kind of like in between our uh, Be Intense cream and our um, Rejuvenate cream uh, for men. This way we can get those guys to start using some moisturizer on their skin to make it brighten them up and, you know, <laughs> reduce, reduce fine lines and wrinkles just like we'd have to do. Um, but uh, this also has some great scents, some great men scents uh, like your uh, Bay rum. Bay rum and your Musk. Uh, yeah the musty smell of the maybe our uh, uh, black tie black tie <laughs> it's, isn't this fabulous <laughs> we also have our women shaving soap which is great again it's the, no different than the formula that we use for the men but we use it on the, for the women with some really sweet um, uh, scents that women would like but you need a puff or you can use a brush either and way and it and it does actually come with a puff and you'll find the puff in the container itself. Then for additionally thing with the men's, we have um, for guys with uh, long beards and mustaches where they need a uh, little extra moisturizing on their skin and some con uh, conditioning and um, taming, we have our men's uh, beard wax. This is really, really nice for guys who have long, long beards um, and they're not actually caring for their, you know, uh, doing a lot more washing of their, of their hair. This will actually help with the moisturizing. In addition to the beard, uh, uh, the beard oils, in addition to the wax, we have beard oils. And those oils do the exact same thing, except that you don't get that extra wax that you would get in here. Um, more uh, essential oils in here to help moisturize and uh, uh, condition the hair itself. We like to tell the ladies that really these, um, beard products are for us because it makes their facial hair soft but when they kiss us they don't scratch us up with their beards and mustaches so yeah so remember that guys women. <laughs> we do have a pre-shave oil that would go on before you would actually put your um do the shaving soap the beard oil itself is added to the skin to help with that extra slip so this is also really nice to uh, prep your skin before shaving um, we do have shaving kits for our guys. Um, it comes uh, either it comes with just this and a and a. Can you see that? Probably not. <laughs> so the shaving kit um, starts out with a, a a stand and a brush and a shaving soap. Then you can add a uh, aftershave to it to another shaving kit, and then one with the the shaving. Uh, 
The DE razor. The DE razor. You know, they, they've tricked us into buying throwaways that have gotten more and more and more expensive. You know, remember back when the, the plastic razors first came out, they were 50 cents or a dollar and, you know, and uh, we just didn't have a problem throwing them away. And, and of course, the DE razor is what the, the blades are 25 cents and they last probably two or three weeks. So yeah. it's really a much more economical thing to use. So um, I think we've shared with you all of our products. Um, are there questions that people have? Um, Kim, does that answer your question? She just asked, um, do you make gift collections? And I was wondering if she was thinking about what you were just saying. <laughs> well, we also do, we do a couple of gift. Um, we're not, we used to do a ton of gift sets. Um, they didn't sell very well only because it was like a seasonal type thing. Um, you'll find monthly that we have specials on our website that were um, either reduced prices or giving gift sets away, those kinds of things. We have one set that, or two sets that um, we call our, um, our, Be well. our Be Well kits. They come with uh, either a honey or a beehive delight with um, propolis, propolis and, nose and, and a nose spray or a throat spray or something like that. So those are on our website, those a uh, few things. The men's kits are on our website. Um, we can always put something together for you. Um, you know, just have to give us a call and we can, we can make that happen, especially if it's a gift that you're sending out. Give us a call and let us know that that's what you're doing and we'll, we'll try and make sure that it gets sent out in a gift form um, versus just um, sending it to you in that way. Um, um, one of the other questions was uh, about what's the typical price range of products? I'm sure they're all, they all differ depending on what you're getting. We try to keep the prices low enough that people aren't, you know, getting priced out of having something that will help them. The, the uh, lip balms are $3.95. The propolis um, oils and tinctures are, are $11.95. Um, there are probably uh, 60 doses in mm -hmm. a 30-ounce bottle. Um, the um, nose spray and throat sprayer start out at nine ninety five. The creams go from eleven ninety five to fourteen ninety five, depending on how much propolis is in them. Um, I think the shaving products uh, are twelve ninety five yep. around there. Yep. Uh, honey is uh, six dollars a half pound, ten dollars a pound in the plastic jars, and um, a little more in the yeah. in the mousse jars. So they're all very affordable and we try to make sure that people don't feel like she said that they get priced out of our products so they don't they almost don't want to buy it. Now we have enough people that they're it's low enough that they'll try multiple products um, when they order online. You know we looked one time at the cost of a triple antibiotic tube that's about a fourth of an ounce it's a little tube this, like this and they're like twenty dollars yeah and you get almost nothing you yeah. know so it's it's pretty reasonable for mm -hmm. what's out there yeah um i had a question about elderberry you guys didn't talk about that i saw that oh. on the website and i thought that might be a good thing for people right now we actually it had a request from one of our um, vendors to make it um, they lost the person that was making it for them asked if we would do so and we put um, the elderberry with the propolis both both elderberry and propolis have antibiotic properties. Mm -hmm. And that definitely is something that we've all been taking during this COVID. Um, one of the interesting things, we, I have found three different articles um, talking about COVID and, or coronavirus and propolis. Uh, one of them was um, in Indonesia, the scientists there at the university have found that the propolis made by their bees kills coronavirus, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have to remember that propolis is different all over the world. It's different from Lori's apiary to mine, right? Because it comes from the the the, the tree, floor of yeah. the of what the bees are going to, you know, just and like, what uh, and they're taking care of what's happening within their right. hive. They're finding the scientists are finding that the bees actually choose different trees to go to, depending on what is infecting their hive. So it's counteracting what's happening in the hive. So that's right. The so you know, but propolis does have you know every batch of propolis has a lot of the same components, but they're all a little different. And, you know, I, I read something in a, a book about essential oils one time or, and herbs saying that, you know, maybe this, uh, these natural products that are a little different every time are going to be the answer to these antibiotic resistant germs. And this, this book was probably came out 15 years ago. And, and this gentleman said, we're headed for a world health crisis because there's an antibiotic resistant germ on every single continent that's different. 
yeah. and here we are. <laughs> um, I also read a couple of other articles suggesting that propolis um, acts in the same way with the, with the uh, coronavirus that uh, one of the, the um, it's Reciravid, I think, the, the, one of the antibiotics that they're using, in, in that it captures the coronavirus mm. um, in the way that it's shaped and it captures the coronavirus so that it can't enter the guard cells in our lungs. Um, the third article I read was that in China, someone has interviewed beekeepers and also people getting AP therapy, which is bee venom, bee sting therapy, and found that none of them got sick. Right. Which is kind of interesting. Now, we were, we were hoping that we'd find that beekeepers weren't getting sick. However, <laughs> my husband ended up with coronavirus, <laughs> with COVID uh, a couple months ago, but he, we were terrified that he was going to get it and we're being very careful. Um, he has six of the risk factors. He's a smoker. He has asthma. He has COPD. He has four yeah. stents in his heart. He has um, diabetes. diabetes and he's over 65 and he got sick and it was nothing. He had a sore throat for a day. He had the chills for a day. He had a low grade fever, not even over 99 and he was just tired and it lasted a week and it was done. Yeah, no different than now. We take propolis every day. Yeah. My our daughter got it also. She's a nurse. She had it three weeks ago. She is a severe asthmatic with food, you know, food uh, anaphylactic food reactions and all kinds of stuff. And she had the same experience. Hardly got sick at all. And again, we all take propolis every day. Yep. So so we're thinking that that had a huge played a huge part in in the health of their lives. So thank goodness because. Uh, uh, they would, you know, if they would have gotten really sick, we would have lost them and that would have been heartbreaking. So you don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, so we are, we're thrilled with our products. We're excited that, um, like Jeannie said, we prayed over this and then, uh, and my goodness, we were kind of like thrown into this on a whim mm -hmm. and we believe that God had done that. It had given us that opportunity. Tell, tell the story from Lori. Your mother -in -law. Oh, my mother-in-law just told us a story about a gentleman. She, they live up in Michigan and they're pilots and they have a pilot friend who um, for the last, I want to say six months was having a jaw issue and um, he didn't really realize what it was until it, it got really bad and they ended up finding a tumor in his jaw and um, they, the diagnosis was not very good when, when he got this, um, when he had gone to the doctor and uh, the doctor, they, when she told me about it, um, he only had a couple more, couple months to live. That's really what they've given him. So she was heartbroken. She's like, can I just give him some of your propolis? I'm like, oh, absolutely. And all she had was the, uh, I think it was the oil and the tincture. So she gave her, gave them both. And there's only the 10%. So remember we have a 30% too, that has more, a little bit more powerful concentration to it. And so she gave it to him and he applied it to that wounded area mm -hmm. in his mouth. And within a month, he went back to the doctor and the doctor was like, I don't know what you're doing, but this, the tumor's gone. Like there's no tumor. There's just an ulcer there. The inflammation that he um, had but prior to was completely gone. Um, he's back to eating food and chewing and all the things that he could not do before. He could barely, he said he couldn't even cry. His jaw hurt so bad. The uh, tension of when you cry caused his jaw to hurt. And so he didn't even want to cry over the fact that his diagnosis. So there's another, another really cool one. That well, we and because he's, you know, the, the tumor had broken through into a, a lesion in his mouth. Mm -hmm. And so by putting it in his mouth and swishing it around or whatever, it, he was actually getting it into that into the wound tumor. Itself. So, the you know, that's similar. I mean, what we tell people is, you know, the research is a topical application of propolis to cancer cells in a Petri dish. Yeah. And they're so, finding that if, um, the, some of the researchers that we've seen on video where they're actually um, applying the, the propolis into the tumor, whether it's internally or um, topically, um, when they apply it into the tumor, it will actually kill the tumor. And so, and, and, and propolis will heal all of the, or keep all of the healthy cells around it healthy so that it doesn't ever spread beyond those healthy cells. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what these bees can do. Mm -hmm. And that's them going out, finding the resin from the trees and, and 
and, and you know, many of their other resources in the hive do many of these things. Propolis is probably the most medicinally active, but honey is an, also an mm -hmm. antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And even though in the they're using honey in every hospital and nursing home in the country, and typically they use manuka honey, which comes from the manuka trees in New Zealand. It has the highest antibiotic factor of all the honeys. However, you know, if you have raw honey on your kitchen shelf, that has antibiotic properties too. I found out that my oldest and dearest friend has used honey on wounds for years, and I never knew that. She's allergic to the carrier and the triple antibiotic and has always put honey on wounds. Um, what does it do? And it kills bacteria. But and the honey actually does a couple of things. Um, it is acidic, so it, 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 kills, it helps kill them because they don't like the acidic environment. But also in a wound, honey creates tiny amounts of uh, hydrogen peroxide. Now, if you know about debriding wounds, hydrogen peroxide is what they debride wounds with. And when they do it in the hospital, they dump it in your wound and it hurts like the dickens and it, and it kind of burns the other cells. Honey makes these little teeny amounts and over a period of a few days, honey will actually debride a wound by creating these tiny amounts of hydrogen peroxide and, and getting rid of that dead tissue. Um, pollen um, has, has a superfood, has lots and lots of vitamins, minerals, and protein in it. Um, uh, royal jelly has some, some um, medicinal effects, but the thing that we have read about royal jelly, royal jelly is what the bees make in the hive to feed the queen. All of the, the bee larvae get a little bit of royal jelly, but the queen larva only gets royal jelly, and it, what's, what's, it is what turns her into a queen. But the problem is that there is not stored royal jelly in the hive, like there is stored honey or stored pollen. And so in order to harvest it, you basically have to raise queens halfway and then kill them all to harvest the royal jelly. Um, the other thing about royal jelly is that it has a very short shelf life and the efficacy of it doesn't last very long and it also tastes awful. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, and, and beeswax, even beeswax has small amounts of antibiotic property mm -hmm. because it has a little bit of honey and a little bit of propolis in that beeswax. You know, those things are all kind of mixed. Yeah. The, and there's, that, that royal jelly that she was talking about in the hives, like she said, the queen herself just gets royal jelly as her food source to grow. Um, all the rest of the bees get a little bit of royal jelly at the get-go, at the very beginning, and then they are fed bee bread. Um, the rest of their, um, you know, uh, lives are inside the, inside the cell um, before it's capped off, before they're actually uh, come out of it. So that's why royal jelly is called what it is, because that's what produces the beautiful the queen that we get in each of our hives. And we only have one queen typically in our hives. So mm -hmm. they're all females. They all can lay eggs. They all could possibly be a queen, but it, they all decide which one's going to be the queen. Well, we have to let you know that, you know, it's the girl bees that do all the work. <laughs> the girl bees are the worker bees and they make all the honey and they clean and they care for the young and they build wax. The male bees are the drones and they're only usually 100 to 200 in the hive out of tens mm -hmm. of thousands of bees. And the only reason they're there is to be there to inseminate a queen if their queen should die and they have to raise a new queen. And at the end of the summer, they kick the guys out <laughs> because they're not going to worry about that over the wintertime and they eat too much. So at the end of the summer, you'll see them dragging the drones out and dropping them off the edge of the ledge like you're you not to get rid back. of them. And, but the other interesting thing is that it's kind of fun for kids. Boy, the drones do not sting. They don't have a stinger. So oftentimes at the fairs and stuff, they'll have pet a bee where you put your hand in a box and pet the, the drones because they can't sting you. Yeah. So, um, uh, so when we have young little beekeepers or bee, or anybody who's interested in looking in our hives, we'll try and pull a drone out so that they can, uh, so a drone can walk on their hand or walk around mm -hmm. them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, And just to put a plug in, uh, we are um, founding members of the Fairfield County Beekeepers Association. We started our club about a year and a half ago and we have 150 members. We have um, a bee yard we meet at, um, when we can meet, we mm -hmm. meet at um, St. Mark's here in Lancaster and the pastor there has been a beekeeper for 40 years and he has always had bees on their property. So they've allowed us to create an apiary for our club that we use to try to train new beekeepers. Um, and unfortunately we trained 45 new beekeepers in uh, February, February and then COVID hit in March or coronavirus and we've been really scrambling trying to support them. But 
Uh, we just recently have opened up our bee yard inspections to small groups so that they can come out and learn. Um, and we, we will be having a, um, a new beekeepers class next February, um, whether it's going to be virtual or in person, we don't know yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, and we, we meet, um, we are meeting by via Zoom right now and, and uh, the third Tuesday of every month yeah, at seven o'clock. We so. have um, ways to, to join the club online at an online store. We have a Facebook page and so forth to, you know, keep information it, out It is there. important that beekeepers come together because we are learning from each other and we're uh, finding out what's happening within our, our region, mm -hmm. what's happening with our bees and if other peoples are having the same issue. You know, we, uh, we are losing our bees on a regular basis. Um, I don't know what the percentage is. I know that it was like 50% last year or something like that within our region and the region mm -hmm. I'm talking about is like Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, those kinds of areas. So, um, I had a devastation uh, loss. I had went in last fall with eight hives and came out with one. And that was heartbreaking. So we did some swarm captures and um, bought some uh, nucleus hives, which are hives that were bees that were overwintered at another apiary. And a new queen was introduced to most of those. So she was already laying eggs by the time I got her. And so that was kind of nice and um, picked up, uh, and, then I, and then my one hive I've split, so. Um, that I overwintered split. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's difficult. It's not an easy hobby to have. Uh, it's definitely uh, exciting to watch what, what happens with them uh, as the, each season grows. Um, I worry about them all winter long, obviously. <laughs> But, you know, and they're like my babies, you know, the first time our first hive that died, we were like, I just started crying, like, oh my gosh, my girls are all gone. Well, and, it, and it is, um, there are just a lot of um, factors that are affecting our bees and, and they say it's death by a thousand cuts, you know, yeah. it's, it's the lack of forage with corporate farms and it's, you know, everybody and their brother using pesticides and herbicides on their yards and uh, all the chemicals that they're exposed to and and the big issue the biggest issue is that there is a, a a mite called the varroa destructor mite that's like a tick on a bee and it has come into the country it came about 20 years ago and it really it it affects the bee from its even in the larva stage it starts to eat their interior body parts and affects everything that the bee does and um, there is another mite that's already in Indonesia that's about 10 times worse than that that is going to get here at some point. And we've got to get research on that to find out what's going on with that one. But, um, you know, it is, it is um, that the, the other thing I think um, we want people to know is we, we do have our own hives, but we can't possibly run enough hives to have enough raw materials to do all of this. So we have kind of created a raw materials market. You know, most beekeepers in this country throw their propolis away. And we kind of go, ah, don't do that. So we have been frantically kind of trying to train beekeepers about what propolis does and to save it. Um, typically in the wintertime, uh, when you reduce the hives down to a smaller size, you take your equipment in your garage or wherever and you spend the winter cleaning it up. If you let the propolis continue to build up on your pieces and parts, eventually it gets so thick and sticky you can't get pieces together. And so beekeepers spend the winter sitting out in the garage scraping everything off. And you know, I can't tell you how many beekeepers have said, oh, I know what that stuff is. I got a bucket of it in the back of my garage. It's been sitting there for five years. <laughs> and so we say, well, save it for us. We'll, we'll buy it from you. So um, that's, that's one of the ways that we can support other beekeepers is by um, right. you know, getting some of the raw materials from them. So especially your new beekeepers. That's how really how we got into the business is um, Jeannie and I are gardeners and I had a year where um, I, my gardens were not producing. I didn't have any bumblebees, any honeybees, um, butterflies, anything in my yard. And um, it had to have been my fault from, you know, using all the chemicals I thought was helping my, um, ape my orchards and berries and flowers. And uh, so she and I went to um, one of the local uh, honey fests here in town and um, kind of fell in love at that point. And I decided I was going to get into it. And her husband decided to get in with my husband and I. And then she, Jeannie got, didn't want to be left out. So she <laughs> I got dragged kicking and screaming. Only be, so. she, she only wanted to be a part of it for the dinners that we went to. <laughs> but are, anyway. Are there other questions that people have? Um, I don't think so. You guys covered, 
you covered a lot. I specifically wanted to know about the elderberry though too. I'm gonna look on your website. Can you tell me, tell us your website really quick? Bepothecary, so it's like the word apothecary, except instead of an A, it's B-E-E-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y dot U-S. And, and you can order straight from the website and have it shipped, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure of that too. Um, I, I have a specific question, but I might email it to you so you could come up with, you know, exactly what would be the perfect mm -hmm. combination. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody else. Very interesting. I want many products. What else is happening? Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think if anybody has any questions specifically of certain issues that they have and they don't want to ask here, um, feel free to call us or email us. We'll do the research and, and get back to you right away without that answer, those answers. You know, there's honestly probably hundreds of thousands of, of research papers on propolis yeah. alone. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's what I love to do. And, I, you know, somebody will ask about something, you know, what about... Uh, uh, Lyme disease or what about, you know, diabetes or something and I'll just get on and start looking and, and see what's out there. So okay. um, Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. yep. Everybody said thank you for all this amazing information. We'll thank be ordering products. So everybody seems good. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on today. Yep. Um, we will do your recording and then I'll send it to you in an email. So it'll you'll get it probably by tomorrow. Okay, great. Wonderful. All thank right. You so much.